I am here to talk to you about Healthcare Delivery Systems, HIT 330 for Fall 2020. This is the syllabus review and want to go over this with you so that you know what I am going to be focusing on and what my expectations are and hopefully what you can expect of me. So let's get started. We begin here shortly um, and we'll go through December 16th or so. This is a two credit hour course and it is all lecture. Sorry about that, but we will try and make it as interactive as we can being an online course that is not synchronous. All right, so instructor information, my information is here. You can take a look at it. And the best way to contact me is through my NICC email. I tend to check that several times a day, even on weekends, even on holidays. Um, I guess it's sort of become <laughs> second nature, but um, that's the best way to catch me. I have office hours on Zoom. I don't have any on campus right now, um, although I do have an office in Max Clark. I think I, I think the last time I saw that was uh, early March, perhaps. Um, but anyway, you can track me down on Zoom, Mondays and Wednesdays from 2 to 4, Thursday evenings from 6 to 8. Other times, if you need me, reach out and we'll set up a, a Zoom appointment. And I will send you, if we're going to Zoom, I will send you an invite so you have all the information and you can join either from phone or from computer or iPad. And if for whatever reason Zoom is not available or does not work for you and you prefer to FaceTime, I have an iPhone and in certain circumstances I will be willing to do that as well. All right, moving on, course description. We are here to explore the delivery and organization of healthcare services in our U.S. society. We are going to talk about the historical development, influence of legislative and technological advances, and what's going on in present day services. That means even in a COVID environment where there's a lot of um, telehealth going on, we will talk about that too. We will talk about the types of providers and professionals that are in healthcare, how services are regulated, financed, licensed, and accredited. And um, so it is a good course, an interesting course. We cover a lot of material and it should be, uh, it should be interesting. Our primary common learning outcome is critical thinking. That's what we're here to do. We want to make sure that we are using critical thinking in all that we do. We aren't just taking what people tell us and, oh, yeah, 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 no, I want you to think for yourself. Even if your opinion is different, I want you to think for yourself. And then I want you to go out and see, can you find any respected resources that support your opinion, any studies that have been done, things like that, to help you with informing you. Um, I don't want to change your thinking, but I want you to go out and investigate and see if your thinking is in line with what's going on and what's out there and what's available, or perhaps you learn something new, or perhaps I do. So it's, we're all in this together and we will be doing critical thinking. Our educational learning outcomes are listed for you here in the syllabus, and I also try and have those um, in the course guide that's under contents, course materials. So if you are wanting to look at the syllabus or print it off, or if you want to um, look at the course guide, go under in Brightspace, go to contents and then course materials, and they will be there. And then as we go through each week and each chapter of the book, we will be talking about these ELOs and then our unit um, specific where we drill down into what we want to be able to come out of in terms of educational learning outcomes. So as you see, as we go through course content, a little bit further in the syllabus, you'll see what I mean. But these are the things we're trying to learn. We want you to come out of this being able to describe, identify, differentiate, state, understand, and know, among other verbs. So as you can see, there are plenty of things for us to learn. We have nine units in this course. The only required materials for this course is your textbook. It's Health Information Management Technology and Applied Approach by Nanette B. Sales and Leslie L. Gordon, 6th edition, published by AHIMA. And please note, keep this book. Do not sell it back. I realize here, I'll show you my book. I realize it is rather big. Here we go. This is the book. Okay, the book, the book. It is very big and it is bulky and it is 
not especially exciting reading material, but we will use this in other courses. We will refer back to it. You may even have assignments where you have to go back and find information. And also, you will find that this is a very helpful resource when you go to prepare for your RHIT exam. We do that in your second year. In the last semester, there's a course called Seminar that works on some items toward this. And you will find this book, according to former students, has been very, very helpful to them when they are prepping. So do not sell it back. At least that's my advice. This course is entirely online. That means you don't ever have to come to um, campus. You don't have to meet in person. We don't do mandatory Zoom lectures that you have to sit in on, that type of thing. I do record chapter video lectures or topic video lectures, depending on what we're doing. And those are posted for you, but you can view those at any time. It's not like you have to hop on at a certain time for us all to Zoom together because this is an entirely online course. All right, grading procedures and scales, it's pretty much the same if you've ever taken any other NICC classes. It's nothing different than that. The grading scale is all determined by NICC, so I don't touch these numbers. What I do is I do plug in our total points and then figure it out mathematically what the range is. So you can take a look at those. We have a total of 55 items in this class. They're worth a total of 2,020 points and that just happened randomly. That was not intentional. When I added everything up it was kind of funny that it came to that and I was like oh wow what, a, what an unusual occurrence. So that is everything. 16% of your um, final grade will be based on discussions. 40% on your assignments, 37% on your quizzes, and you will have one major paper slash project that is worth 7%. I offer one extra credit opportunity. It's worth 75 points or 4%. So um, you do need a C minus in order to keep moving on in the program and be able to graduate. So um, we need you to be above, at or above these points when you finish the course, okay? Um, this just talks about how we assess learning because we need to assess learning. We need to make sure that we're teaching you the things you need to know, but also that you're learning the things you need to know that the teaching is effective. Um, so uh, you will be assessed to see are you gaining the material, retaining the material, that type of thing. A um, couple things in this paragraph I want to emphasize. The way online quizzes in Brightspace work are that if you quit a quiz and it's not, and you are not done with it, everything you didn't do grades out into a zero. So let's say there's a 50 point quiz, you do 35 of the questions, and then you hop off for whatever reason. Those last 15 are gonna grade out as zero, which means essentially you will probably have failed the quiz. So please don't do that. If you are not sure that you can finish the quiz before you start, wait. Do not start it. Um, because once you start, you need to finish it. Um, you can't log in, log out again. And quizzes only have one attempt to them. So don't blow your one attempt. Um, the second part that goes right along with this is make sure your internet is stable. I, I know after the storms of a couple weeks ago, um, it has really disrupted internet for a lot of folks. And I'm sorry about that. And I'll work with you on that. But when you get ready to take a test, make sure your internet is stable because if it goes down in the middle of your test, again, Brightspace will, will assume that you have decided you're done with the test and everything else is scored as a zero. And we don't want to do that. And I'll talk about cheating and academic dishonesty a little bit later. So we'll move on. The course calendar will be here at the end. We'll go over it. It's the last couple of pages in the um, syllabus. There is at least four opportunities, I believe. There, yes, there are. There are four opportunities for you to give course feedback. There are, um, there's one major at the end, which really goes in detail to the course. And then there are 
other items um, that you'll see in there. Please take every opportunity to give us feedback because it helps us improve NICC, me, <laughs> which I appreciate, and the course itself. Uh, we're constantly revising to try and make things better and your feedback will help us with that. So please be honest and, and constructive, helpful in your feedback um, of what, what you as a student are experiencing. And so again, assessment, we are assessed, we at NICC, not just instructors, but the whole college are assessed by the Higher Learning, or, um, Higher Learning Council and several others, and they assess us. And part of their assessment of us is, are we assessing you and giving you opportunities for feedback? So make sure that, um, that you are involved with all of that and, and you complete your feedback, you complete your assessments and those types of things. So course policies, attendance is taken every week because this is an online course. I look at, are you doing your homework? Are you doing your, your discussions? Have you posted your discussions? Have you posted answers to other people's discussions? Um, are you completing your quizzes and assignments? All those types of things. Uh, that tells me that you're engaged. If I don't hear from you, I'm probably gonna shoot you an email and say, hey, are you okay? because sometimes things happen in life and, and um, I just wanna make sure you're all right and that um, if there's anything that we can do to help you, we do it. Especially if, let's say you have something happen and you're gonna need some, ex some due date extensions. Um, I will extend due dates for everything except discussions. And so reach out to me if, if you've got something going on, um, please do that, but I have to take attendance. And it's okay, I mean, you may find that there's something that happens that you need to take a week off, just be aware that your attendance is the difference between excused and absent. Okay, academic dishonesty. Um, I really hope that we don't have to have this conversation. So let's just briefly cover it in the syllabus so that in the future we don't have to have that discussion. Um, when you choose to cheat or plagiarize, you are undermining yourself in terms of your personal professionalism, your reputation, your conscience, and your integrity. Academic dishonesty is not worth it. So I'm asking you to choose to be honorable and do the right thing regardless of internal or external pressures. Um, don't cheat and don't help anybody else cheat. So what do we mean by academic dishonesty? And here's a, a, a section of this from the HIT handbook. Um, most often, academic dishonesty happens by accident. It is usually through plagiarism. It's through forgetting to use direct quotes. If you, I mean, if you use someone's direct quote, make sure you use quotation marks and cite the text um, to, be, to be certain so that you've got all that in there. Um, don't paraphrase without crediting the source. It's a great thing when students talk and, and, and compare ideas and, and whatnot. And you may find that somebody else has a great idea that influences your thought process and how you're gonna write a paper or maybe the answer you're gonna give in a discussion post or what have you. That's not a problem. Just make sure you credit them. You can say in a conversation with student ABC, um, we went over this idea and I really think XYZ. So it's okay to paraphrase or present someone else's ideas as your own as long as you credit the source with proper citation. You need to, you know, if it's a direct quote, use those quotation marks and say where you got the information from. Unfortunately, it has become um, somewhat of a big black market business to have people write papers for college students, um, even high school students from what I understand. Um, submitting material that was developed by someone else as your own is plagiarism because it's not you. It's not your writing voice, it's not your thought, it's not your perspective, it's not your research. We want what's from you. So, Please do not submit material that has been developed by someone else. Submitting something for which so much help was received that the results in writing is significantly different than your own. 
I want to encourage you, there are plenty of opportunities to get help at NICC with writing, with research, with tutoring, and all sorts of other things. And those are all good, and we want you to take advantage of those. But again, if you develop something or someone else provides you with something, um, you need to use it as a basis for your thought, but you will need to cite it. And you can't just pick it up and dump it into your paper or paste copy paste it into your paper and use that as if it's yours because it's not it's not your voice it's not what what you yourself have written so um, those are all ways that students can accidentally and not just students but anyone who writes um, can accidentally slide into plagiarism which is cheating and academic dishonesty so Please make sure that if you are doing something that you use appropriate citations and quotes. Um, please don't copy someone else's work or allow somebody else to copy your work. Um, please don't share test answers. If you take a test early, don't share that with your colleagues. And um, this just goes through some other things along with academic dishonesty. I do not consider it cheating if you share notes from classroom activities, discussions, and or video recordings as long as you appropriately cite it as a resource that was used to develop your own ideas and complete your own work. Okay? So that gives you an idea of my expectations. I am not out to look and see if everyone cheated, but it does become obvious over time if someone is using something that's not their own. It's also very obvious if someone uses something that we have been working on or researched during the week and then they put it into their paper and they don't appropriately cite it. So those types of things um, are, are pretty obvious pretty early. So enough about academic dishonesty. Let's just agree we're not going there and we'll be really careful about citing our sources and those things that influenced us and move on. All right, late work. I hate late work as an instructor, but as a student, when I was working on my master's degree, I had a couple of uh, really significant life events that threw me backwards, and I actually became behind on writing several of my papers for my master's program. And I remember my instructors taking mercy on me and allowing me to make those up. And I want to offer you that same mercy and compassion. Um, again, I don't like wait, late work, but I understand there are times in life where we get overwhelmed. We have things that happen to us out of the blue, um, things we can't control that may put us behind. And I will gladly work with you if that is the case. Um, as soon as you can complete something, complete something. If you can work ahead, work ahead. If you can't, reach out to me. We can look at extending due dates for everything except discussions. Please notice, discussions are not accepted late. And here's why. The discussion happens the week it happens. So if you're late getting in on that, others can't see your posts until after the due date closes. So they can't respond to them. And that doesn't really add to the discussion. So make sure if something happens and you're going to be out, you at least get your discussions, your discussion posts done. And then we can work on assignments and quizzes and other things, moving the due dates out. Assignments, please make sure they're in typed form, unless I, unless I tell you otherwise. And usually everything is going to be done individually unless I'll let you know if there's a group activity. No extra credit opportunities are offered to individual students. I just don't believe in that. That's not me. Um, I will offer you that one extra credit opportunity, and I hope you take advantage of it because it's good information to be aware of. But um, I don't, again, no individual student extra credit opportunities will be created, offered, or accepted. And you can't use extra credit points to regain points if you lost them due to academic dishonesty. The next section is all about technology in the classroom, and I just include it for good knowledge in case something changes and something weird happens and we end up being face-to-face -face or online synchronous for some strange reason. But here you go, it's all there. 
for you. And again, I just reiterate that you make sure your wireless connection is really, really stable if you're going to take a uh, quiz or an exam. All right, behavior. I'm going to touch brief briefly on this too. Classes are an excellent place for all of us to hone our professional conduct and communication skills. Students are expected to be respectful when dealing with classmates and the instructor. Use of polite language and appropriate tone of voice when communicating in person or online demonstrates such respect. Has anyone ever sent a text and autocorrect has made a change to that text that has changed the meaning or the tone of that text? You didn't realize it. You hit send and off it went. And then afterwards, you're like, oh, no, that is not the, what I meant. That's not what I wanted to say. All right. So we all know about autocorrect, right? And it happens to all of us at different times. If we don't stop and review exactly what we want to send before we hit that send button. So please, please, let's have some mercy and compassion with each other and understand that just like with autocorrect, our communications can go awry. Um, when we communicate, so much of communication is tone of voice, body language, and an emotion, what you can see in someone's eyes and and all of that. It's not just the words. So when you take that away and we communicate through email so much, um, it's hard to know sometimes where someone's coming from. And if we are hypersensitive about what is coming to us, then we're gonna we're gonna misperceive that communication. And this on the other hand, when you're writing a communication, make sure you read through it and review it. Is this really what I'm trying to communicate? Um, sometimes being matter of fact can be a bit abrupt. It's not meant to be, but it can be. So, you know, read through it really quickly before you send it, before you hit send, just to make sure that it is the right tone of voice, the right, that it's polite, that it's helpful, that it's kind, that it's, it's appropriate. And on the other hand, if you are the receipt of an email, please understand that someone is not out to miscommunicate with you. That's not the position that they're coming from. Um, we all make mistakes. We're all human. But let's be gracious and merciful on both sides. Let's try to have the best intent possible when we communicate. And let's try and receive that communication in the same, in the same, from the same standpoint. And then I think we'll do really well. But courses are a great way that you can learn what's professional, what's not, and that sort of thing. So just, just take a minute to review. And if you feel like something is disrespectful, go ahead and speak up and just say, hey, you know, this, this struck me um, as being disrespectful. Can we talk about it? Because um, that's where we really need to go. All right, moving on. Um, there's additional information. Whoops, my screen got frozen there. Additional information you've got about the Learning Center. If you have not been, please take advantage of that. If you have any need for their services, they are great people. They have wonderful services, and they are eager to help you. Um, access, this is just information about the Read Speaker for Brightspace. Um, of course, copyright, we try and respect that. Um, Sometimes that's a challenge for me as an instructor. What's copyrighted, what's not? Um, so if something changes up at the last minute, it may have to do with co course copyright that I wasn't aware of. But um, try and be aware of that when you share your information too. Um, we just talked about email etiquette and behavior etiquette, but now there's netiquette. And this just talks about guidelines for electronic communications so that we can be civil with each other because we're not always going to see things the same way and that's okay um, but we want to make sure that what we do is is polite is respectful is um, is is optimal for the situation accommodations if you have an accommodation or you need an accommodation Please make sure that you have that through Disability Services, that you work with them, and then reach out to me. 
um, privately. That's something between you and I, and that's where it will stay. But I want to be able to support and encourage you and help you succeed. So if you need an accommodation or have one, um, let's do what we can to set things up behind the scenes so that you um, have your needs met and are able to be successful. Because that's really what it's all about. Um, we all have weaknesses. We all have strengths. And when we can play to our strengths and we can optimize our weaknesses through whatever tools are available, uh, that's a good thing. Nothing wrong with that at all. Statement of non-discrimination. It is the policy of Northeast Iowa Community College. We do not discriminate on the basis of race, color, national origin, sex, disability, age, employment status, sexual orientation, gender identity, creed, religion, actual or potential parental, family, or marital status in programs, activities, employment practices, those types of things. We are here to learn. We are here to help you succeed. We want that to be what this is all about. Um, we do not want to be involved in discrimination in any way, shape, or form. All right, course calendar. Here we are. Typical due dates are the Monday following the week of class. Uh, deadlines are clearly indicated in Brightspace. Go off of Brightspace because I try to make Brightspace my um, source of truth, so to speak, that you can go back to. And if it's in Brightspace, then that's what it is. If you have any questions after looking at Brightspace, then reach out to me and we'll try and clarify that. And a lot of times I will clarify that through an announcement in the class so that you can be aware. The things that usually open early are discussions. I try and open those early so that you can complete those in advance if you choose to do so. Um, please don't forget that you need to reply to at least five of your classmates posts each week that, and those close on Mondays at 11.30 p.m. So you need to do your post and then you need to reply to five other classmates posts. Um, and you need to make sure of that. So you can post for yourself whenever the discussion is open. Um, and then make sure you go back and read your classmates' posts and respond to at least five of those. There are rubrics for most of the discussions. Please make sure you look at the rubrics before you start on the discussion. And for the most, I think for this, there is only one discussion rubric and it's the same for all discussions. Um, I've been looking at so many courses lately and I've got six this semester, so I get a little confused at from time to time, but I believe that this is one of my classes that has the same rubric for all discussions, but you'll want to familiarize yourself with it. So this is our video review syllabus that I wanted you to watch first. Before you dive into Brightspace, I was hoping that you would watch this first so that you know how you know the requirements when you start working on graded items. You are not graded on watching this video, but it is set up as an assignment that you need to confirm that you completed within the first week of class. You just have to click submit when you're done watching the video. Um, I do weekly lecture videos usually, and I strongly encourage you to watch those because I'm trying to go over the material that I think you'll need to know, both, in, both for your chapter quiz as well as in the real world. So, um, I encourage you to watch those. They aren't graded and you don't have to confirm completion. That's on your honor. That is up to you. Assignments. We have regular versus special assignments. Regular assignments usually do not open early, but special assignments I will make sure are open three weeks early. Um, all assignments open on Tuesdays at 1230 in the morning and close the following Mondays at 1130 p.m. Some of the regular assignments have the same rubric. Most of them do. Be sure you review that rubric before you begin so you know how I'm going to grade. I like to use rubrics because I think they're very fair and equitable. I think that they um, help us have a baseline of expectation. There are different rubrics for the special assignments. So, for instance, um, the reflective paper may have a different rubric than the group project on registries. So just, just be aware of that. And I ask you that you look at those rubrics before you work on each special assignment, just so you know, how am I going to grade? What am I looking for in your assignment? Okay, so what opens weekly? Regular assignments open on Tuesdays and close on Mondays. Your quizzes will open on Thursdays, Thursdays at 1230 in the morning for those of you who are really, really late at night people or really, really super early in the morning people, however you want to look at that. 
Um, they close on Mondays at 11.30 p.m. There is one attempt available. It is time limited and is graded based on correct answers only. Brightspace will automatically score and grade these. And most of these are going to be multiple choice questions. Gets you ready for the, for the AHIM uh, um, certification exams. The purpose is for you to demonstrate that your proficiency with the materials that were learned over the chapters being tested. Are you learning the information you need? Okay, so we are right here, week one. Um, your class actually opens on August 22nd, but at the time I was writing this a couple of weeks ago, I did not know that. So um, it says 820 because that was the official start date at NICC. This week, your assignments are to do your video, your syllabus video review, um, to post in your class introduction. Um, the online discussion for class introductions. Um, it is also to complete the assignment on introduction and history of modern healthcare in the U.S., as well as healthcare delivery systems. This is based on um, an article um, from AHRQ, and we'll get to know AHRQ well. And then I will provide a video lecture on Chapter 2. There are 62 slides. Um, we are actually, if you notice, we're going to spend several weeks on Chapter 2. So I'm going to video lecture this week. You don't need to watch the whole video. It will probably be a tad long. But um, you can um, watch, watch it and then notice that I'll have lectures on topics. So you can come back to this. Any of my videos that I do that are longer than 15 minutes, I really encourage you to pause them at 15 minutes, get up, take a short break, and come back because we tend to learn well um, in 15 minute segments, but from a recording standpoint is easier and more helpful for me to record the entire lecture in one shot. And that way then you can always keep track of where you've gotten up to in terms of time. Like say you, you watch the first 10 minutes and then you decide you're gonna come back tomorrow or the next day and watch um, the next 10 minutes and then the next day or, next, or a day after that and watch the next 10 minutes. You can just start and go on from there. Okay, it tells you what topic we're going to be focusing on. It tells you the chapter and then the main focus of that chapter that we're going to work on, the point value to the activities, and then course objectives. Remember we talked about your educational learning outcomes and your program learning outcomes, which are the unit objectives, and then your common learning outcome is critical thinking. So for every week, this information is here. So week two will start September 1st, and we will be covering this information. And you can see we're still on chapter two, but we're gonna focus on federal and state. Week three, it'll be public health. Week four, it will be uh, professional and government organizations. Week five, it'll be healthcare systems and inpatient settings. Week six, it'll be outpatient, office, clinic, and telehealth settings. Week seven, we'll finish with long-term care, hospice, home health, and durable medical equipment settings. And then week eight, we finally move into chapter three, but we're going to do chapters three and four. And don't worry about chapter one. We will come back to it. It is coming up. But in week eight, we'll do chapters three and four. We want to talk about healthcare workforce. Week nine, chapters six and seven, we'll be working on registries and have a group assignment. Week 10 will be chapters nine and 10, and we will talk about HIPAA, AARA, and the high tech uh, regulations that came out of the federal government. Week 11, it'll be health information systems where we look at EHRs, EMRs, meaningful use, um, and now MACRA. Meaningful use has gone away, even though that terminology is still hanging out there. It is now MACRA, and we'll talk about what is MACRA and how is it different from meaningful use. And then in week 12, we actually go back to chapter 1, and we combine it with chapter 5. We're going to start out by talking about the HIM profession, and then chapter 5, is uh, terminologies, classifications, and coding systems, and we'll touch briefly on that too. Then week 13, on to chapter 15, we're talking about revenue management, reimbursement, financing healthcare. Um, week 14 is Thanksgiving, so it'll be a bit light, but we'll be touching on fraud, abuse compliance, financing healthcare, healthcare quality, and then Week 15, chapters 12 and 18, where we go into some healthcare information and informatics and performance improvement, looking at how quality and healthcare are intertwined. 
And then our last week, hard to believe it's August, but we're talking about December already. Um, that will be our last week. We'll be having a discussion about looking back. You'll have a reflective paper to do, and you'll have that extra credit assignment. And this is really all about kind of wrapping it up and assessing. So that is all of it. Um, really quickly, the last two pages of your syllabus, we have to prove that our curriculum is matching what is required by HEMA in their different domains. So they tell us, okay, we have six domains, although we're only touching on three of them in this course. These are the competencies they want to see us come out of this course with. And these are the Bloom's level required. And I have Bloom's on the next page if you're wondering, what is Bloom's taxonomy? Um, it is the levels of education. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, create. And so this is what they tell us are the minimum Bloom's level that is required. And then here are the activities and assessments we are going to do in this course and how, what Bloom's level those will meet so that we show that, that we are doing that. And these that are not applicable to this class, you will find that they get picked up in other classes because by the end, we will have gone through all six domains, all competencies in every domain, um, probably more than once, probably more like three to four times, depending on the class. All right, so that is what all this material is. And this was your syllabus. I'm sorry it went long, but hopefully we went through it thoroughly enough that it was helpful to you. I don't get to see you in person. I will see you through video. Um, but again, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're at NICC and in the HIT program. And I look forward to having a great semester with you and a great course. This will be fun. Take care.